Anybody else glad to be Pentecostal out there? Amen. Amen. And I want more of the Lord. Anybody else want more of him? Amen. Amen. I tell you how you get more of the Lord. You give him more of you. You give him more of you. Amen. And you will get more of him. And I believe it's the same way with the Holy Ghost. You know, if we just want to know this much about the Holy Ghost, guess what? That's probably all we'll ever know and get. But if we say, Lord, I want to know all there is to know, I want to experience all there is to experience in the Holy Ghost and the power of God, how many believe God will give us more? Well, he'll give us more. And uh, so I'm so thankful for the Word of God and, and how uh, it teaches us and leads us and helps us understand things about Him and, and His ways. And so uh, this morning we talked about the Holy Ghost being like the wind and like water and, and like fire. Amen. Talked about those things this morning. Uh, but this evening we want to talk about, as we pick up here, if you have a lesson uh, left out there, I don't know, uh, but we want to pick up number four and how the how the Holy Ghost is like oil. Amen. We see him typified as oil and how important the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost is. Let me say this before we get too far into this. Um, one of the services up there uh, at Export this past week, uh, Brother Zane Estes preached Wednesday night. Man. You, if you, if you got Mixler on your phone, you you need to go back and uh, look for Wednesday night. On the, I, I went ahead and listened to some of it again yesterday. Uh, Wednesday night, Brother Zane Estes uh, preaching on uh, being controlled. The controlled. How do you title that? The spirit, spirit controlled life. I think's how he titled it. Something along those lines, and uh, how we need to be controlled by the Spirit. One of the best messages ever heard about, you know, we have our self, our flesh, and the spirit. And, you know, that struggle between the, the flesh and the spirit and how we need to crucify the flesh and don't give in to the flesh, but let the spirit have control of our life. And it's just powerful. And uh, how he kind of went through there, you know, some of the, the fruits of the spirit and that last fruit of the spirit, temperance. And how, you know, modern translations, they will use the term uh, self-control for temperance. But really, he was, you know, talking about how we need to be spirit-controlled. When the spirit, that's real temperance, is when the spirit has complete control of you. Amen. Hopefully that's our desire here in a Pentecostal church, not just to know about the Holy Ghost, not just to know how the Holy Ghost feels, but let the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, control our life, a Spirit-controlled life. Because when the Spirit controls your life, that changes everything. Desires, actions, words, deeds. You won't want, you won't do the things of that, you know, the entertainments of the world, the things of the world. Why? It's because the Spirit has control. Amen. He's going to lead you the right way. Amen. He's going to lead you in the right path. A spirit control. How many want to live a spirit controlled life? Amen. He's not going to lead you to the to the things of the world, the amusements, the you know, the enjoyments of the world that the that the world finds enjoyment in. Amen. Now, if you find enjoyment, in this, uh, I, I know there's some things that could be the same, but but you know, some things that the world finds exciting. I don't think the church needs to find excitement in the same things, you know. I mean, you know, if you get a million dollars unexpectedly, anybody's going to get excited about that. I understand there are some things, you know, anybody's going to get excited about. Amen. But there are some things that the, excites the world don't excite me. Some things that interest the world don't interest me. Because i got a, a different desire, got a different heart, got a different mind. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord that's there. Amen. And that's, that's how we need to be, church. Amen. Controlled by the Spirit. Amen. You're controlled by the Spirit. You won't want to go to the worldly places. Amusement. You won't want to go to the movie houses. You won't want to go to the ball games. You won't want to go to the bowling alleys. You won't want to go to the roller skating rinks. You won't want to go to those worldly entertainment places. Why? Because the Spirit of God has complete control of your life. Amen. amen. So, amen. I know he probably didn't preach exactly a whole lot like that, but it's kind of along those lines. But man, man, 
It was tremendous. If you can find that, of course, it was all great up there, amen, but especially that Wednesday night, Brother Zane S. is preaching on the spirit control life, and, and of course, you all know, already been thinking along these lines, of course, in Sunday school, and we want to be true Pentecostal people, right? Amen. And one very important uh, element we see in the Word of God, how the Lord helps us to understand the ministry of the Holy Ghost in our life is through Him being seen as oil. Luke 4 and 18, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus said, He, the Father, He hath anointed me. Anointed. Amen. I know uh, we're not as familiar with anointing uh, today like they were uh, familiar with the anointing back then. You know, usually, usually, Unless I hear an audible voice from heaven to do something different. You know, usually you come up here and we pray for you. You know, we'll, we'll put a little dab of oil on your forehead as a symbol, you know, for the spirit of the Lord that's there, that's, that's working, that's moving, you know, a, a symbol of the Holy Ghost on your life and his work on your life. But you know what you read in the Old Testament and, and how, you know, people ready for the service of the Lord, they didn't just give them a little dab. They poured it on them. I mean, drenched them with that oil, that holy anointing oil. And you read there in the Old Testament, maybe it's Leviticus, I think maybe, and how the, the Lord tells Moses, you know, the ex exact compounds that need to be in that holy anointing oil and how precious that was. Amen. But, but that, uh, that anointing oil, what is it? It's a symbol. Amen. It's a type of the Holy Ghost and how he works in the life of believers. Praise God. And so when somebody was anointed in that Old Testament time, amen, you know, they, it was a symbol, you know, they, they poured it out upon them. Lord, help this little cap to stay on where it needs to be. Amen. And you know, they poured it as a symbol of the Spirit of God that was upon them, something that they needed. Amen. How many believe we need the Spirit of God? Amen. How many believe we need the Spirit of God all over us? All over us. We see in the Old Testament how kings were anointed. Priests were anointed. Prophets were anointed. It was a symbol that God's Spirit was resting upon them. Amen. Guess what? Here we are in the New Testament, and guess what we are known as? We're known as kings and priests unto God. Revelation 1, 6, and 5, and 10. The Bible calls us. Did you know you're sitting among royalty here tonight? Brother Nicky, we're kings and priests unto God. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us, Revelation 1, 6, and 5, and 10, that we are kings and priests unto God. So guess what? You know what we need? We need the anointing. We need, you say, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. Guess what? You need the anointing. God, if you're a king and a priest, and God has given you, a kings have authority, right? Amen. And we, the children of God, guess what? We have authority. Amen. In the spirit realm, in the power of God. And you know what? We have got that authority comes from the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost that God puts upon us. Amen. A priest in the tabernacle or the temple was never ready for service till first he had been washed, the blood had been applied, and then the oil poured upon him. You know, he was only able just to stand around and watch and look. And before he had all these other ceremonies done, but he could not work for the Lord in the temple and in the tabernacle until he had been anointed. Amen. With that oil. And I tell you what, if we every day we need people to work for the Lord, we need people to work for the Lord now. Amen. And you know what? Not just, just go through the motions, but Brother Justin, whatever we do for the Lord, do it anointed. Do it anointed. How many believe God can anoint you in your work for the Lord? Amen. How many believe the anointing's powerful? Amen. And let me say this. I know I've talked about this before, but you know what? You don't, 
you know, you, that you don't just have to scream le- real loud and talk real fast to be anointed. Now, the anointing may come on you and you may scream real loud and talk real fast, but that does not necessarily mean, woo, he's anointed. He screamed really loud. He talked really fast. He must be really anointed. You know, you know, that's not exactly the anointing, but I tell you what, when you feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost come down upon you, amen, there's power because there's power in the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 10 and 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. Listen here. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That thing that had somebody bound that they could not shake loose. You know, we think of a yoke, you know, that holds those oxen together. And those oxen are so powerful and strong. And I'm sure he don't wake up in the morning saying, boy, I can't wait till Farmer Joe just yokes me up. Put that big old heavy wooden beam on my neck. You know what? I, I don't know. I've never lived a life as an ox. And I probably never will. I don't imagine it's the most pleasant thing to be yoked up with somebody else. But I tell you what, amen, and you know, people, they, they get bound by certain things, and that yoke just holds them there. And if they could get free, they would, but they're bound. But praise God, when somebody has the anointing of the Holy Ghost, what comes along that addiction, that bad habit may be like a yoke that they've tried to shake loose, but they can't. But praise God, Brother Seagrass, when the anointing comes, what does the anointing do? It destroys that yoke, and it brings liberty. Praise God, church. We need the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. We need power. There's so many things people get bound by, so many things people get addicted to, that I still believe there's the power of the anointing oil, amen, of the Holy Ghost that can come and still break and destroy every yoke the enemy brings. Can you say amen? Not only is the anointing powerful, but the anointing is soothing. What did the good Samaritan do to the wounds of the poor man that had been robbed on the side of the road and left to die? The Bible says that good Samaritan, he poured in the oil and the wine. Those places that were hurting, those places that were bruised, amen. When that oil and that wine got in there and that good Samaritan, you know, symbolizes the Lord, right? What's he going to do? He's going to pour in the Holy Ghost in the place where it hurts the most. Amen. Amen. Why? It's the Holy Ghost and the work that he does to heal those places in our lives and in our hearts and our minds that hurt. Amen. I just remembered and uh, when uh, years ago when me and Sister Dana and Sister Dana were expecting our first child, and I know you've, you've heard this story before, but we were expecting our first child, and, and the Lord and his uh, plans decided uh, to take that child and uh, we spent that long night in the hospital as, as she lost our first baby. And uh, we was in revival down in Kentucky. And then the next night we were in church and the Holy Ghost just come down in that church. And you know how the Lord blessed my little wife? With a laughing spirit. She just lost her first baby the night before. But the Holy Ghost come down in that church and she laughed and she laughed. And she laughed, and she laughed, and she laughed, and she laughed, and she laughed in the spirit. Hey, you know what the Lord was doing? He was pouring in the oil. That place was hurting so bad. Hey, man, the Holy Ghost was able to, amen. I know the anointing is powerful, yes. But the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost can be so soothing. Amen. So as I've said here many times, we don't know who's going to come in that back door. We don't know the burdens, the problems, the pain, the trouble, the sorrow that they face when they come and sit in these church pews. But Brother Jim, that's why we need a church, amen, that has the anointing. Whether it's somebody that's full of the devil and we need a powerful anointing that's able to them to get victory over that evil spirit, or whether it's somebody that's plagued with pain and sorrow and hurt and turmoil, and they don't know, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is there and just able to soothe them. How many believe we need the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost? Can you say amen? You know what we need around here? We need anointed praying. 
I know every religion, I assume, I don't know everything about every religion, but I assume every religion prays to some God up there. And I know every Christian religion, you know, denomination, I know they pray. But there's something different about a saint of God that gets anointed when they pray. And there is a difference. And by the grace of God, I felt that a time or two in my life. Amen. You know, you just, you know, you can pray and you can do your best to think of words that are right. But when the Holy Ghost takes over and he prays and you feel the anointing, that's when things change. How many believe we need to be anointed when we pray around here? Amen. How many believe we need to have anointed worship? You can go to a lot of churches. You can hear a lot of singing. You can hear a lot of music. You can hear maybe there's just something, something, something different when people get in one mind and one accord and the Holy Ghost begins to move and people get anointed in their worship. How many believe you can get anointed in your worship? You can get anointed in your worship. God can anoint you. Amen. We see that, you know, David's life and other psalmists life and the people of God in the Old Testament. Amen. They got anointed when they worship God. Amen. Brother, sister, you can get anointed when you worship God. How many think we need anointed preaching up here? We need anointed preaching up here. Amen. And if you're out there and you know what, if, if, if you sing up here, if you play music up here, you know what you need to pray for? You need to pray for the anointing. Amen. I love good music. Amen. You know what? And you know, I love anointed music, but I tell you what's really good when good music gets anointed. Woo! That's really good. Amen. Amen. I love preaching. I love good preaching, but man, when good preaching gets anointed, wow, that's really good. And you might be out there and you may never sing and you may never preach, but you know what you can do? If you're just out there, you can pray, God, anoint them. God anoint Brother John. God anoint Sister Dana. God anoint Sister Dolores. God anoint them singers. Because we need the anointing, church. There's power in that anointing. It destroys the yoke. It soothes those places that's hurt. Amen. And it, the Holy Ghost helps those that are bruised and wounded like nothing else can. Amen. And I know, you know, it's, it's easy, you know, when, when, when we're bothered and we're upset and we're sick or when we're hurting, it's easy just to, just to, just to soul up and just, you know, and just, hey, man, but I tell you what, you need the Holy Ghost. You need his spirit. And I, 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 don't, I don't think there's any words in Webster's Dictionary how to define what happens. When a heart that's been in trouble and turmoil and bruised and hurt, but in a service where the Holy Ghost moves and does the work in somebody's mind and heart and soul, he gives them peace and gives them help. I don't know how to define that. I don't know how to describe that. All I know how to do is enjoy that. Thank God for that, that God knows what you need. The Holy Ghost has what you need. Amen. And that the anointing of God, amen, is able to do what nobody else can do, what no pill can do. Amen. It's the real Holy Ghost. I'm just glad there's a real Holy Ghost still working among us. Amen. So our prayer needs to be like David's prayer of old. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Amen. Come on, how about let's pray, God, anoint us with fresh oil. God, would you anoint us with fresh oil? Fresh oil. God, we need 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 fresh oil. Oh, that's the ministry of the Holy Ghost Church to come down and anoint us with fresh oil. And guess what? I don't believe God's stingy. Hey, when we read there, I believe it's Psalm 133. I know the psalmist is talking about unity there. Hey, man, the uh, saints of God being in unity, it's like the oil that flowed down upon Aaron. Hey, man, he even did his beard even to the skirts of his garment. All the way down, the whole body was covered with oil. 
Amen. I'd sure like for the whole body of Shelby Street Pentecostal Lighthouse to be anointed with fresh oil. Is that your desire here? Amen. That the Holy Ghost, he can do far more than we could ever think and imagine. So let's keep praying for the anointing. The Holy Ghost, we see in the Word of God, is like oil. The anointing, not only oil. Let's move on here. I, I guess I'll get through this here tonight, Brother Justin. I don't know. We might have to take it on to Wednesday night. I don't know. Amen. The oil is also, we've seen the scripture like wine. Wine. The accusation by the crowd on the day of Pentecost was that these men are full of new wine. Wine. And yes, this crowd up there in that upper room, they were under the influence of something. But they were not under the influence of wine from the vine, but they were under the influence of the new wine from heaven above. Amen. New wine from heaven above. Have the Spirit of God, and that wine is, uh, you know, natural wine, fruit of the vine, you know, can become intoxicating, you know, take control of you that you don't walk the same you don't talk the same. You don't act the same. Why? Because you've got inebriated in some kind of wine. Amen. But I tell you what, the same way as the Holy Ghost, amen, you let him come into you and you let him take control like I was talking about earlier. And you know what? You won't walk the same, live the same, you know, your walk of life. It won't be the same. Your talk won't be the same. It'll be different. Why? Because you've come under the influence of a greater and a higher power. Praise God. How many believe we need to be under the influence of the Holy Ghost? Under the influence of the Holy Ghost. It's so very important, amen, that we stay under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Paul told the Ephesians, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So do you know how much natural wine, you know, that they opened the bottle, you know how much of that wine I think you need to drink? About that much. 0. 0.00000000. None, nada, zilch, nothing. Amen. But you know how much wine of the Holy Ghost I think you need to be? Amen. You need to be full of it. Amen. Full. Amen. Where he, he leads you, he guides you, he takes control of you. Let's not be satisfied to have an experience of the Holy Ghost where we just feel just a little bit here and there. But no, amen, let's, let's have a determination, Lord. I want the Spirit of God more and more. I want him to take full control. Amen. On my body from the top of my head to the sole of my feet because we need it. We need it. We need, we need the Holy Ghost and his work. And now he'll lead us and guide us and be full of the Holy Ghost. Not only do we see the Holy Ghost as wine, but also as a seal. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yeah. Sealed unto the day of redemption. I know a lot of times we think of the word sealed and, you know, we think of a Ziploc bag. How many know what a Ziploc bag is? You know, you put your little goodies in there. You put your bologna sandwich for lunch or your peanut butter jelly sandwich for lunch or your pickles or your peppers or your cookies or your chips. You put them in that Ziploc bag or whatever you put in the freezer or whatever. And what you do, you zip that zip and we say it's sealed. And I know that's sealed. But that's not the Greek word here talking about, you know, sealed. This Greek word here is talking about a stamp for security or verification. Kind of like I got this, and I know I've, I've used this before around here. I've got a seal. Amen. Don't go nowhere. Hmm? So I'm going to put my seal on this piece of paper. So you put this on here. And you squeeze that, and that says right there, property of Jonathan Wayne Burdine. Amen. That's me. Hmm? 
And so what I used to, I don't do it very much anymore, Brother Justin, but what I used to on my books, you know, I put that kind of one of those uh, front pages of that book there, you know, that this is the property of Jonathan. That's sealed. This is the kind of seal that that's talking about here in Ephesians chapter five. And you know, back in the, you know, back in the day, how, what they, you know, they would send a, a letter to somebody, you know, and how they would put that security on there. And they would fold that letter up and they would take some, some wax and they would pour that wax on there and they would take their certain, you know, how this one says, you know, JWB, Jonathan White, but they would take and they would impress that into that cool wax and it would leave that impression upon there, right? This is the property. This is sealed, but security. And so that was delivered to somebody else. And if that seal had been broken, you know, it'd been tampered with, right? And so it was a sign of authority that this come from the governor, this come from Caesar, whatever, however it was. And so they had that stamp, it had that seal on there that this is the property of the king. This is the property of the governor. And so we see one work of the Holy Ghost, what he does to his People that are filled with the Spirit, He puts a seal. He belong to me. He belongs to God. She belongs to God. This is God's property. Amen. And I know you may not think Brother John's very much, but you know what? I'm God's property. And so what does the Holy Ghost do? He comes, amen, in our life, and he impresses a pen upon us, amen, God's seal, and how we maybe say it today, the seal of approval, amen, that I belong to him. How many's glad you belong to him? Amen. I'm one of them. I'm not ashamed to be saved. I'm not ashamed to be spirit filled. I'm not ashamed of holiness. I'm not ashamed of any of that. And so what does the Holy Ghost want to do? Amen. He wants to move upon us and in us. Amen. And put his seal upon us that we are not ashamed. We go wherever you go on the job, in the store, Walmart, Kroger, wherever you go. And you're not ashamed to say I'm one of them. Amen. I know we don't walk around proudfully saying, I am a Christian, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. Huh? No? Amen. But you know what? Amen. If he puts his seal upon your life, people will know. People will know. How many of them want the Holy Ghost to work in your life like that? People will know. You let the Holy Ghost work in you. You won't have to just boastfully say, I'm a Christian. No, people can see it. She's one of them. He's one of them. Why? Because that Holy Ghost impressed that seal, that sealed all the way to that final day that we're taken out of here. Amen. Sealed until the day of redemption. Not only sealed, but we see, I know we talked a little bit about this last Sunday. Amen. We see the Holy Ghost as the earnest. Earnest. 2 Corinthians 1 and 22. Who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. This earnest is talking like a down payment. It's been pledged to us. And man, we remember last Sunday morning how the Spirit of the Lord just moved so freely. And we thank God for that. We don't take that lightly. We don't take it for granted. But I want you to know the best, however long you've been in this good way, if you could think of the best Pentecostal church service you've ever been a part of. And the power of the Holy Ghost that you felt wherever it was that you felt it. And in how great that was, that's just a down payment of what's to come. I want to let that sink in. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, if you're filled with the Spirit and you know God's Spirit inside of you and you have felt God's Spirit move in you, that's just like earnest money. It's just a, a down payment to get you from here to there. And when we get there, Brother Seegers, we're going to get it all. The earnest 
of the Spirit in our hearts. What we have is just a down payment. Praise God. I don't know if that blesses anybody else out there like it blesses me. Amen. But I tell you what, that, that, you know, we think of heaven, we think of mansions, we think of streets of gold, and yes, all that's wonderful. We think of Jesus and, on, and the saints of old and all that's wonderful. Amen. But I tell you what, if what we feel right now is just a little down payment of what we're going to feel over there, Brother Todd, that's why we got to have a glorified body because these mortal bodies wouldn't be able to contain and hold and feel all that we're going to feel over there. Anybody say praise the Lord here tonight for the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he comes by on a Sunday night, amen, to give us a little earnest money. Amen. And we feel good to let us know that there's more coming. Amen. And you get in a place of prayer and you feel the Holy Ghost pray through you. You feel and you feel the Holy Ghost speak through you. You know what that is? He's just reminding you, this is just a down payment. Amen. There's more coming when you get over there. Amen. And you feel the Spirit of God and maybe you get slain in the Spirit or you run like a 16-year-old and you're 87 or 88 around this church house. Hey, me what that is? That's just a little reminder. This is just a down payment. What you're feeling is just the earnest money. Hey, man, there's a whole lot more waiting over there when you get over there. Woo, praise God. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. God's great, church. God's got great things in store for us. And my little mind can never, never, ever, ever, hey, amen, get wrapped around all that God has for us. Hey, amen. But I just want to let the Holy Ghost work. I want to let him move. I want to let him guide. I want to let him lead because, hey amen, I know it'll be right. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. So finally here uh, this evening, one other way we see the Holy Ghost uh, typified throughout the Scripture to help us understand how the Holy Ghost works in our lives, we see him as a dove. A dove. We see him as a dove. Luke 3 and 22, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a, on Jesus. This is Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape, like a dove upon him, upon Jesus. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. Amen. What is the dove a symbol of? Peace. Amen. Peace. 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 That's what the dove is a symbol of, peace. And how did John the Baptist see the Holy Ghost come down upon Jesus there as he came up out of that water as a dove that came down upon him there, the peace of God that came upon the, the body of Jesus as he came up out of the river of Jordan there being baptized by John at the peace of God. And I tell you, if somebody needed peace, it was the Lord. And all he was going to go through, anybody that was going to be stressed out, you know, it, it could have been the Lord. Anybody that needed nerve pills, it could have been the Lord. And all the things fighting against him, warring against him, all of that going on. Hey, but I, I, don't, I don't read about Jesus wringing his hands. I don't read about Jesus pulling his hair out and stressed out. Hey, man, I believe for all of his ministry, he had peace. He had peace. And there may be, you know, different reasons for that. And, you know, he knew he was going to accomplish the Father's will. You know, he knew who he was, what he was there to do. But maybe another reason why, hey, man, he had peace. He was able to sleep in a boat in a storm and everything falling around about. He had peace like that because the Holy Ghost was on him and gave him peace. Amen. Are you here tonight needing peace? Yes. Peace? Thank you. Amen. Let me tell you, God and God alone can give you peace that passeth understanding. Amen. Only God can do that. Woo. Only God can give you the peace that passeth all understanding. Now, I wish I could tell you here tonight that you live for the Lord. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. But how many know even the best children of God go through storms? They face disappointments. They get their feelings hurt. They get sick. They stand by the grave of a loved one. 
We're going to go through those. Amen. Amen. Yes, we're going to cry tears. Yes, we're going to have questions. Why? We're going, to, we're, we're, going to, we're going to deal with those even being children of God. But you know what? Through it all, we can have peace. Peace. Believing that God's got it under control. Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand. But God, you're going to work it out. And that's one of the chief uh, uh, ministries of the Holy Ghost in our life is to give us peace. Letting us know everything's going to be all right. Amen. God, the Holy Ghost, with all of his power, how many believe the Holy Ghost has power to do these things that we've uh, talked about this morning and tonight? And he's able to do it in your life. Now, don't, don't be sitting back there this evening and think, well, that's just for the preacher. That's just for, that's just for him. That's, just, that's for you. That's what the Holy Ghost wants to do for you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to put his seal of approval on your life. He wants to deposit some earnest money into your life. He wants to anoint you with fresh oil. He wants you to have the fire. He wants the early in the latter rain to fall upon you on each and every one. Not for just one or two, but if you're a child of God, the Holy Ghost wants to do his work in your life. And he, do, and he does these things, amen, not because he's against you. No, he does these things because he's for you. He does these things not to make your life more difficult. No, he wants you to make you better equipped for the trials of life. Maybe not to make your life easier, but make it better equipped for the tr trials of life that'll come because trials of life will come. They will come. But if we allow the Holy Ghost just to work through us, to work in us, guess what? He's going to come by. He knows what needs to be done. If you need to feel a mighty rushing wind of power, guess what? God, the Holy Ghost will come by in a mighty rushing wind and give you what you need. But if you're hurt, and you need that oil to be poured in those wounds. Guess what the Holy Ghost will do? He'll be poured into those wounds and he'll heal. Amen. In your life, you need rivers of living water to just gush and to go and to move things. Guess what he'll do? He'll be rivers of living water. Amen. And he'll bless and he'll help and things will move and you'll go on with victory or if you... Hey, Mother, find yourself in just a, a horrible situation. You don't know what to do, and you need peace. Guess what? The Holy Ghost will come, and like a dove, he'll hover over you, and you'll feel peace. When you should be stressed out, when you should be losing your mind, going crazy, God can give you peace. Anybody say amen? Amen. The Holy Ghost is there to give you peace. And so what we need, we need all the workings of the Holy Ghost in our life. Amen. However he works, we need his purifying fire. Yes. yes, we need his purifying fire. We need his warming. We, we need it all, church. Amen. So let's not just pick and choose and say, well, I only want the Holy Ghost and for him to work in it. No, we're going to need him all. Yes. We need it all. We need it all. And guess what? He wants to give it all. Praise God. Sister Angie, can you get us a song here? Amen. This evening, praise God. Amen. So let's have a, a desire. Let's have a longing for more of the Holy Ghost. More of the Holy Ghost. And here at Shelby Street Pentecostal Lighthouse, not just to know, you know, say, yeah, I'm Pentecostal. I believe in the Holy Ghost. That's great. That's wonderful. Amen. But let's know more about him. Let's let him work more and more and more in our life. And I tell you what, we'd probably be amazed. Amen. We let the Holy Ghost work in our life, work in our church services each and every time, work in our prayer life, work in our Bible reading, and we'd just be amazed that God, the Holy Ghost, is concerned about me, concerned about us, and wants to help us to be better equipped for the trials of life. Amen. Come on, let's stand all around the house here this evening. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we love you. God, we love you. God, we love you. God, we love you. Thank you, God, for the mighty baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, for the mighty promises of God. Thank you, Lord, that you're still alive and on the throne. And, God, I pray for every member here at Shelby Street Pentecostal Lighthouse. God, to be anointed with fresh oil. God, that they get in their prayer closets and they get anointed in the place of prayer. God, as they stand back there in those pews and they lift their hands and sing and worship God, I pray for some brother, some sister get anointed as they sing and worship God. Lord, I pray for these singers. I pray for these musicians. I pray for me. I pray for our preachers, God, to be anointed. We need the anointing. We need the anointing. We need the anointing, God. We need everything the Holy Ghost does for us. And we need it right now. I pray, God, let there be an openness. Let there be a willingness to submitted to the will of the Father, God, to receive all that you have for us here tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, church, this altar is open if we could. Amen. Let's come up around this altar. Let's pray for more of the Lord. Let's pray for more of the Holy Ghost. Let him work in our life. Let him anoint us. Let him seal us. Let him deposit that earnest money of his spirit in our life. Come on, let's gather in. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's believe God. We need more. We need more, church. Come on, let's pray.